I'm Sarah. I'm a member here at Cross Point, a wife to the most incredible man, and a mom to the most vocal two-year-old music enthusiast I have ever met, <laughs> and an occupational therapist working here in the Triangle with children since 2011. I've spent over a decade working with parents and children, building skills and routines in complex family structures and helping families regain confidence and competence in everyday life. Now, does that mean I have it all figured out? Absolutely not. <laughs> in fact, please don't come to my house at bedtime as it's an all-out battle most nights. <laughs> but it does mean that I have seen and heard and held a lot of families' hands as we've figured it out together. There are some steps that I see most families go through before really solidifying a routine. And today, I'm here to share those with you. Here's what I know. Start small. Let's start with the beginning. You've decided it's time for everyone in the house to have some responsibility. Awesome. <laughs> but let's not get carried away. <laughs> Starting something new in and of itself is a big deal. So start with really small, achievable tasks, like something you have observed your family members to be capable of doing. Starting with a task that is familiar and achievable can almost guarantee success in completion and with incorporating that task into your daily life. A new skill rarely becomes routine if at first it's overwhelming and too challenging, huge, or just flat out despised. <laughs> Setting up a routine with an intention of a small task consistently. Hugging before leaving the house, putting a dinner plate by the sink, or just pulling the covers up over your bed are all small steps to a big task. Starting small establishes success and confidence, both of which are really crucial in getting to the next step and the next one, and the next one. If you're wanting to build on your family routines and create a responsibility in driving your children, starting small and fostering confidence will be probably the most important step you take. Next would be consistency. So you've decided this week, your family will help with the dinner cleanup and you know what first step they can handle. You're gonna crush it. But there's soccer, and a PTA meeting, and a virtual call with their Aunt Sue, and suddenly your plan of literally washing your hands of dinner cleanup by next week is quickly fading. How can you stay consistent when life is not consistent? <laughs> Take a breath. We know this. While consistency is key, so is being realistic. Real life doesn't happen on a conveyor belt. Serving up day after day, perfectly curated hours and minutes. So be consistent with what you can. Having dinner at home, great. Approach the cleanup the same every time. Everybody clears their plate. Everybody rinses their plate off. Soon, everybody will run the dishwasher. <sighs> Remember, achievable steps lead to lasting change. If Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, you're at the ball field, know that those nights, they'll not slow you down. Those nights, have their own opportunities. Once 
you feel confident enough to find them. Picking a task that can integrate into your routine and that you can consistently refer to will help this less of a, be less of a chore and more of an expectation. And that will naturally lead to the next thing. You've got this. So how? <laughs> how do we get our kids to participate in the routines of our family? Or to care? <laughs> or to carve out time to develop responsibility for themselves and not send them into an avoidant, resistive power struggle where we both end up tired and defeated? Well, I can't guarantee that those things won't happen. I don't have a magic wand. I really, really wish I did. <laughs> I would share it with you. But we have to remember that children are human too. We can't help guide, we, but I can help guide you to create a space where family members feel supported and capable of doing these tasks together. By observing, modeling, assisting, and finally letting go, we have the opportunity to allow our kids to develop independence and life skills while also offering support. So let's dig in. Here we go. You've decided that task you think is the ticket. Your kid is smart and funny and capable. Let's watch what they do, how they learn. What are they motivated by? As their family, you have a good idea of what makes them tick. Use that knowledge to develop an idea of where to start with each task. Do you have a kid that loves to play Legos and can sort all those various pieces into each type and location and color? Sounds like to me that child would be great at sorting silverware out of the dishwasher. Does your child love to nurture and is a caregiver at heart? That seems like a great opportunity for someone to be named Fido's main walker or meal prepper or snuggler. Playing into our kids' strengths and interests will help them accept that role and increase the likelihood of their confidence in that role. A confident, supported child will not only participate in that role and routine more readily, but they will also be able to approach the next step and or challenge in that same way. All right, so now we get to be models. <laughs> You've decided what task is a good fit. We figured it out. You may want to have a conversation with your kids about the plan if they're old enough. You can do this while showing them the steps or you can show them what you'd like them to take over. Bringing them into the decision making as if they are part of the, making the plan. Making them feel part of the process can also rev up that participation. Once we are talking and instructing our kids on how to do the task, we have to show them. Model for them what to do, where to put the thing, how to wash the thing, how to care for the thing, what time works for them to do the thing, <laughs> and so on. Showing them every step and allowing them to help as they are comfortable will decrease the amount of anxiety around that task or situation and support them in learning an efficient way to get the job done. We cannot expect our kids to jump right in in a new task without showing them how, why, when, and what. This modeling step is so important. Some children love this phase. It can be a special time with a parent 
a cool new job placed in their routine and in their hands, and a source of pride for them knowing that they are contributing to your family. So we've set them up, we've shown them how, and it's time to assist. Now that you've helped your child find the right task for them, it's time to pull back a little bit. Now I know as parents this can be really hard. <laughs> you may still be needed to start or stop that task, but they may be craving a little more independence. The phrase, I do it myself, comes to mind recently, constantly. <laughs> While this may seem intuitive, this step is another important assessment phase. Once you step back, it's time to assess where assistance or support is needed and what is the best way to support that child. You can be there to assist them in completion of the task while also gauging what parts are the most difficult for them. Use your expertise as the person on the planet that knows that child the best. To find out what supports may work best for them. Is your child a visual learner and visuals work best? Are verbal cues the best way to reach them and achieve that goal? Does the child work best when they get to figure it out themselves and use their hands? These are all really valuable questions to bring what type of learner they are to the task and ensure long-term success with meaningful supports. These supports will set them up to not only complete the task that you're presenting to them with as much independence as possible, but also set the stage for how to approach future challenges in home, at school, or in the community. Let's go. <laughs> All right, we've done this work. Your child is prepared. You are prepared. <laughs> they know what to expect. You have walked them through the steps, set up the supports where they are needed that are the most meaningful for them, and they've succeeded. Now comes the hard part, <laughs> letting go. And not just letting go of their hand and letting them do this task they are totally capable of, but almost more importantly, letting go of the expectations that you have for that task. We are all guilty of that. <laughs> letting go of the need for it to be done the way that you would. Letting go of the need to manage the when and the how. This is the magic sauce of cultivating responsibility. Allowing them to find their groove. Letting go of that need to create a perfectly color-coded calendar of times and tasks and all of it. Here's your permission to not have that completely figured out so you can give your child the chance to do the same. <sighs> Let's take a breath. <laughs> We've covered a lot, and I genuinely hope that you can take these tips and apply them to your family. Small, consistent steps, fostered with supported independence and individualized learning styles can lead your family to cooperative daily routines and children that readily engage in those roles and responsibilities. What a gift. I'll link some resources here to use if you have specific questions about what roles would be best for your age children. Thanks for taking the time today to chat with me about these ideas. And I hope your families continue to thrive. Take care.